Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Philip. Today I would like to address garage security and specifically how to guard from the 6 second wire break-in. This break-in is well publicized in the news and is done by pushing the top of the garage door in and sliding a wire or a coat hanger into the opening. With that wire the thief searches for the emergency door release lever. Once located it is pulled down and the door is free to open. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you know that I like to find market-leading technologies and then seek out or create the lowest cost alternative options for them. This video is not sponsored and I purchased everything shown here myself. In this video I will show you what exists on the market to solve this break-in problem and then we'll show you a DIY solution that can work even better than the store-bought versions. So let's dive in. The easiest solution is to put in a zip tie through the emergency release and call it a day. You can purchase the type that will break with enough force to get it open. Or you can keep wire cutters nearby in case of an emergency. If you have children or elderly in your home, they might not have the strength to break the zip tie. And this is a serious safety issue. So let's explore the safe options. There are a couple of products on the market to address this issue. Here is a garage shield as an example. It's a thin piece of plastic that I can easily, if I wanted to, I could snap it in half. It's very, very light. It feels almost like a cardboard. It goes on like this. So it, it dips in and, and mounts right here. So it looks like a spade over shovel to me. The mounting is done via this bracket. So actually a pretty cool design where it snaps into the holes like so, using these snap-in snap -in screws. They're made out of plastic, but they fold in when they go in. So they will just kind of go in like so. Okay, so if you don't want to go into the hole, you just want to get the screw into the plate itself. Then it becomes steady, but still it does not require a lot of push to, uh, to loosen it and to start vibrating off. I still don't like it. If you decide to relocate the shield, these thin ridges get bent and might not be as effective once removed. So make sure that you connect it properly on the first try. The shield itself is too short, at least in my application. Ideally, it should end below the top of the door to be fully effective. Also, it does not wrap around the emergency release, allowing access from the sides or from below if the shield is mounted too high plus the price of approximately $30 for that material and product feels like too much. You can literally cut out a piece of thick cardboard and zip tie it to the J-Bar. There is your garage shield. Cool idea, but definitely could be made better. Let's make it. This is the final product that you will be able to make by the end of this video. As you can see, it serves several functions. It wraps around the release, so no matter from what direction the wire enters, there is simply nothing to hook onto. The cover is long enough for the bottom edge to be below the top of the door, making it harder to access from the outside. The pull cord is stuck inside the housing and can't be grabbed with a wire. Total cost is under $10 and there will be enough material left to make one more for your friend or a neighbor. And the best part is that you can make it fit your specific garage dimensions. So if you're interested in making one yourself, keep on watching. Here is what you will need for the project. A 4 inch wide PVC pipe and you can find a piece a couple of feet in length at your local hardware store. Two small corner brackets in metal to mount the cover to the J-Bar. You don't want plastic because you might have to bend them a little to fit and you don't want them to snap. 
So look at your own situation and see what works best for you. Three bolts with washers and most importantly, vibration proof nuts. This will guarantee that your installation will never come apart. A saw with a blade that cuts PVC. I suggest using a Dremel tool to make the process faster. Make sure to use a face mask and goggles if you're using a Dremel because you don't want to breathe in the PVC fine dust. If you're using the hacksaw, you should be okay without those measures. A drill to make the mounting holes, a small screw-in hook for the release cord, and optional zip ties and spray paint in your desired color. If you already have the tools, the parts are about 10 bucks total. If you don't, this might be a good time to start a collection of useful tools. The concept can be shown using an empty Gatorade bottle. It was slit open along the side and mounted to the J-bar. The cutouts are made to clear the hardware during the movement. As you can see in the picture, the purpose here is to make the guard as small and unobtrusive as possible while providing protection by fully wrapping around the point that you don't want to be reached. You also want to allow for the intended function, so the door and the emergency release function as normal. With the understanding of this concept, you can make a permanent version out of a 4-inch PVC pipe. Make a long slice along the pipe to allow for mounting over the J-bar, Cut off bits of the PVC pipe to account for the moving parts of the door and then adjust as needed. First you need to adjust the top cut angle of the pipe so it sits flush with the rail when the door is closed. It helps having the work area right next to the J-bar so you can make adjustment cuts on the fly. You want to make sure that the emergency release trigger is fully covered when the door is closed. When the door opens, the trigger and the wire must have freedom of motion. In a way, you are creating a channel which must stay unobstructed, so the trigger and the wire can move through it. Make sure that the bottom of the pipe is located below the top of the door and trim to the desired length. This way, even if the wire is pushed in, it will get deflected around the pipe. The level of detail and the final shape is all up to you. Make it as aesthetically pleasing as you see fit without losing its intended purpose. As you can see on mine, I opened up the bottom part wider to make it look less like a pipe on a stick, but more like a... Um, what would you call this? Now drill a few holes on the back of the pipe for mounting and install the angle brackets to the J-bar. To make the installation easier, you can make the holes larger than the bolts, so you can position them exactly how you need them. Then you can use smaller diameter washers to make sure that the nuts don't fall through those larger holes. As an additional option, screw in a hook at the bottom of the pipe to keep the hanging emergency release cord from being exposed. If the cord is tucked in, it creates one more level of protection. If the wire is too short for your liking or you have kids or people with disabilities, you can always add length to the cord it is hidden, so length does not really matter anymore. Once you have the design fully cut out and you test fitted it, you can leave it as is or paint it with spray paint. I went with black. So here it is fully installed, as you can see it is not very noticeable and creates much more protection than what you would get from the products like the garage shield. So this is my monstrosity, feel free to play with the design to make it your own. I am interested in seeing how you implement this idea for your situation. Hit me up in the comments with ideas and thoughts. If you make a video about your implementation, send me a link, I'd love to see it. So now you can see how easy it is to fully protect your emergency release without purchasing the overpriced equipment. And we have arrived. 
Thank you for watching and making it to the end. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of the new uploads, and I'll see you all on the flip side.